Good evening, Hello. welcome Good evening. everybody. Good evening. We're gonna wait yeah. just a couple of minutes so we can start. Okay. Okay, everybody, welcome to the class. It's a pleasure to be with you tonight. And, uh, well, as usual, we're going to check about the uh, platform first. So, this is the class of tonight. And uh, the homework for tonight is 1.7. So, perfect. So, this is going to be like the exercise. You just need to click the uh, right option on this one. Only five questions. And that's it. So by now we're going to check the attendance so we can start all over. Ana Claudia Gonzalez Velasquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Fernando Marvin González Martínez. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present teacher. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodríguez Ayala. Jose Osmin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Bran Mejía. Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Present teacher. Good. All right. So we are going to start. And uh, first thing we will do tonight is... Uh, to... uh, teacher, Fernando, I am here. Ah, perfecto. I'm going to check into that one. Hold on a second. Here you are. Thank you. Okay. Oh, perfect. So um, first thing that we will do tonight is to watch a video. So... We are going to watch this video, check about this interview, and then you just tell me what you understood on that one. What did you think that it was interesting about? So let's check into that one. Let's see. Let's go into the, this one. Okay, here we go. I'm Toba Watana. I'm the founder and CEO of Calendly. And Calendly is a platform that uh, helps to schedule meetings and also powers meeting workflows. So what that means is we eliminate the back and forth of scheduling. Instead of sending four or five emails to get a meeting scheduled, 
We help you get that done in one interaction. And in addition to that, we power meeting workflows. So after the meeting is scheduled, we can help you distribute the meetings between team members. We can help you send out reminders so that your invitees show up on time and are well prepared. Uh, we can update your CRM, your applicant tracking system. Those are just some of the workflows that we power. We've been in business for six years now. Over four, about four million people use the app on a monthly basis. And our customers range from individuals to small teams to large enterprises like Zillow, Zendesk and uh, Marketo. So the idea of Calendly came to me when I went to schedule a meeting. Right? So before I started Calendly, I was in enterprise software sales. So I spent a lot of my time scheduling meetings with people. Right? And one day I was looking to schedule a meeting and it took way too many emails to get it done. And I became frustrated and I was hoping I could just go to some website and sign up for a product that would uh, make scheduling easier for me. Instead of finding that, I found a lot of tools in the market that were difficult to use, they were clunky, they were vertical specific, they worked really well for people in the health and beauty space, but they didn't really work well for a business professional. And uh, seeing you know, that the world uh, des desperately needed a scheduling tool that worked really well for everybody, um, I became obsessed with the problem. And uh, I uh, studied it and spent a lot of time really developing an idea of what would make a a world-class uh, scheduling uh, platform, and uh, I hired a, a team of engineers to uh, partner with to build it. Unfortunately, I had a lot of really bad businesses before Calendly, but they were uh, really instrumental in my learning. So before Calendly, I started a number of e-commerce businesses. Um, I started those businesses because I was looking to start a business, not because the world needed another e-commerce website. And so because of that, some of those ideas failed. Uh, but Calendly was the first business that I did that had uh, major success, and we've just uh, doubled down on the success since then. Um, one, uh, being a little crazy, <laughs> I think helped. Uh, but some of the things I think helped the most is I, uh, I was, uh, you know, I spent a lot of my time in my career doing many, many different, different things. So I kind of changed. Uh, my career has evolved in a lot of different ways. And through those evolutions, I learned a lot about many different topics. And so what I think a founder does, what a CEO does, is like they're really very, they're, they're very good generalists, right? And I think that, um, you know, I was able to acquire a lot of varied experience throughout my career. And so what I would encourage entrepreneurs to do, or inspire entrepreneurs to do is, uh, be, be very open to learning all kinds of different things. And um, if you see an idea that you think that you feel incredibly passionate about, go for it. So some of the lessons that I've learned is first and foremost, it's important to be passionate about the problem that you're looking to solve. If starting a business for you is just about making money, it's probably going to be very difficult for you to, to, to succeed because you can't fake the passion. Um, if you don't have the passion, you will not be motivated to work really hard on the problem and without hard work and concentration and focus, uh, it's very difficult to make a business successful. Uh, so one is passion. Uh, definitely, I think it's very important to think about your product and your service along with how you're going to acquire customers in a repeatable uh, way from day one. Some of my previous businesses, I thought about the product, I thought about the service, but I didn't put enough thought into how I was going to acquire customers in a repeatable and cost-efficient way. I spent too much time thinking about the product and the service and not enough about the customers and what I would do differently. Um, so those are some of the lessons that I've learned from my failures. Uh, some of the biggest challenges that we have is that uh, we're just growing really fast. So the product is growing, the team is growing. And so how do you make sure that uh, in spite of all that growth, everybody feels like a family, everybody feels like a team, everybody really knows how to work together and that we're capturing feedback and we're acting on that feedback in a rapid manner. Uh, so those are some of the biggest challenges that we have. Another challenge that we have is just because of the growth that we're having and also the, you know, the strength of the economy. It's a very tough environment to recruit and uh, to recruit talent and also attract talent. One of the things that we want to do very well is continue to invest in our culture, our people and culture, more so than we've ever done in the life of the business. So these are some of the things that are top of mind for me right now. 
I find inspiration from a lot of things. So one of the things that I like to do is I like to take ideas that work in other businesses and think about why they can't work in your business, right? So if you look all around you, every time you go to buy coffee and you go to Starbucks, even though it's in a completely different business from you and it has a completely different distribution model from you, anytime I go somewhere and I have a really good experience, whether it's another product company, whether it's a, you know, it's a retailer, whatever it may be, I think about how we can uh, learn, uh, how we can take uh, lessons from some of those ideas. Conversely, every time I have a bad experience, I want to make sure that uh, you know it, it, it touches me. I want to make sure that we're not creating those bad experiences from for our customers, for our employees. Uh, so that's how I get a lot of my inspirations. It could be from sometimes from product companies, from sometimes it's retailers, sometimes it's services businesses. Yeah, so when I first started the company, I bootstrapped it with my money. Uh, so <clears throat> the idea of you know what we now call Calendly was so, I was so excited about it that I took every single dollar that I ever made, all my savings, all my retirement money, I took all of that and I invested it into uh, Calendly. Over time, after we built the MVP, I needed additional funds to continue to grow the product and continue to serve our customers. And after that, I decided to raise a seed round in 2014. And that's really most of the money that the company has raised. So raised a, very, a, a little bit of money and uh, th th it made the difference in the early days um, to continue to build upon the product. Yeah, so I have two investors. Uh, they're Atlanta Ventures and OpenView Ventures. So these companies, they've invested in lots of successful companies. What I would advise entrepreneurs is that if they're thinking about bringing on investors, is I think first and foremost, before you bring investors, I think it's good for you to build and develop your idea as much as possible. So that way you're raising later on in the in the life cycle. And what that means is you can you can raise and give up very little of your uh, your ownership stake in the business, right? So the later you are, by the time you decide to raise, the more of the company you can retain, not only just in terms of equity, but also in terms of control. So that might, might be my first advice to entrepreneurs. The second advice is, as you're raising money, there are lots of people out there who could, uh, if you have a really good idea and a really good business, there are lots of people who are dying to give you money for it, but not everyone is a good advisor, right? So what I would also encourage people to think about is, not just who has the money, but who has the networks uh, that will help you grow, that will help you solve difficult problems that will come along the way. It might be international expansion, it might be people and culture, it might be product, it could be any, any kind of thing, but I, I would encourage entrepreneurs to raise money from those people who can help them solve difficult problems uh, that they will undoubtedly encounter as they grow their businesses. Altogether, we have about 80 people. 70 of those are in the States, and then we have 10 people uh, from our technical partner, Railsware. So we started with Railsware. Uh, they were the initial people who helped us uh, to get the product off the ground. Over time, we've added people in the States. We've added them in all kinds of functions, so sales and product and engineering, uh, but we still continue to work with Railsware, and we've expanded that relationship uh, since uh, we started working with them in 2013. So my current, my current role, we today we have a really uh, strong management team. So just really all functions within the, within the company are being led by other people that are way smarter than me and way better at what they do. And so my job these days is just to to be the glue for those people, right? So I with in conjunction with them, I set the strategy for the business. And uh, so my goal is just to be a, a, a glue for them to finance their ideas and also be a cheerleader uh, and. Uh, to help them to get those ideas done. Yes, my job has changed so much since uh, 2013 and it will, it will continue, continue to change. Some of the big changes were in 2013, I was uh, essentially the only person on the business side, right? So we you know, work with the engineers from Railsware and I was the only person. I was support, I was uh, sales, I was product manager, I was a uh, designer in some ways. I just, I spent time with the customers, but today, much other people do those things. Um, and also today, uh, compared to six years ago, six years ago, the strategy and the vision for the company resided in just my head. Fast forward to six years later, when you have 80 people working together to uh, launch this idea, it's, very, it's a lot more important that communication is improved, that the strategy and the vision is clear to everybody. And so that's how my role has changed. Now, I, 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 I spend more of my time really thinking about the vision and the strategy and communicating that to, to the team than actually maybe doing the work myself. 
Yes, so I have lots of advisors, and one of the things I wish I would have done earlier in the life of the business is been more proactive about seeking out advisors, but I have all kinds of different advisors. Uh, I have an I, uh, advisor who's uh, who I lean to for people and culture uh, issues, right? So as you're growing a company, you need to attract people, you need to retain them, you need to create an, a culture that makes people excited about the mission that you're looking to build. So I have an advisor for that. I have product advisors, I have engineering advisors, and also my management team, they function as uh, advisors for me. Um, so in, in seeking out advisors, a, a recommendation I would, uh, I have for, for every uh, entrepreneur is to, to start thinking about it early and also find advisors that complement them in all kinds of different ways. And advisors who've solved problems uh, that you haven't solved before. It was definitely very difficult to choose a vendor. Um, one of the reasons it was very difficult for me was it was the first time I was building something of this magnitude. It was the first time I was committing uh, this much money and this much capital. I was going all in on the idea, and this really, for me, was a very personal thing. I was using all of my, all of my life savings to build it. So not only was I excited about the idea, the risk was also really high. But I believed at the time that the world needed another scheduling tool, even though it wasn't obvious then. I, I believed very strongly in the idea. And I knew that if we did built a really good product, if the execution was really good, that we would be very successful. And so when I was thinking about uh, getting a technical partner, I wanted to find somebody who was just, who had a great track record of building great products. And uh, that's how I uh, found Rose work. But to answer your question about uh, what, are the, what was the process that I went through to pick a vendor, I interviewed a lot of people, uh, people all over the world. And what I found was a lot of people just really cared about how much money I had. They weren't excited about the idea. Um, they, it was just another project for them and they saw an opportunity to make money, but there, there was no passion in what they were looking to build. And so I would encourage entrepreneurs as you're looking for people to partner with, I would encourage them to find somebody who's truly a partner, somebody who's just as equally excited about your product and your idea as you are. Right? It's a very difficult bar to, uh, to, to, to meet, but I would encourage entrepreneurs to find that. Um, I'd also encourage entrepreneurs to find people who have an excellent uh, technical record. Uh, so I mentioned some of those before. Some of the reasons I went with Rails where it was, as I interviewed lots of different people, uh, I met with a lot of people who cared about money, but not people, not many people who are extremely passionate about the idea. What also happened at the time I was looking to uh, pick a, a partner was, I spent a lot of time thinking about the product that I wanted to build. I knew exactly what I wanted to build, or at least I thought I did. And so I was just really looking for somebody who was really great at building product and would just build exactly what I wanted. But when I met with Railsware, so when I met with Railsware and when I compare my conversations with Railsware with uh, some of the conversations from the, some of the other vendors, uh, Railsware actually, uh, they challenged my ideas, right? Um, and in challenging my ideas, they got me to think about things I hadn't thought about before. And in doing so, it made my idea much better, and till today, it's probably the difference between Calendly being successful and not being successful. And so, the reason I went with Railsware is they took my idea that I, I they took my idea that, that I, the ideas I already had, and they they challenged it and made it a, a lot better. So, I would encourage entrepreneurs to think about people who can execute really well and build great products, but also people who can improve your strategy. Young entrepreneurs, um, I did not start to act on my first business idea until I was in my late 20s. And uh, knowing what I know now, I think I could have started a lot sooner. And it's also very inspiring and encouraging for me when I see kids that are 15, 16, and they're already launched websites. They're, you know, they're collecting some money from one person. But, and uh, I wish I would have done more of that when I was 15 or 16. There's nothing that stops you from uh, doing that a lot, uh, a lot earlier, so. That would be my advice. If you find something uh, that you think that you're qualified to do or very excited to do, uh, try to get started in any way you can. And also, don't uh, take advantage of any learning opportunities that you have along the way. Great. So, what did you learn here? What did you find interesting? What comments do you have about the video? Okay, one, one important thing is that uh, the rule changes. You started doing uh, almost everything. And then you go changing and you go 
giving that role to another person, maybe uh, who has more capability. Maybe you have the passion, but uh, there are other people that have the capability. Like in the case of Steve Jobs, that he asked who is the better man to do the marketing of, of Apple. And the best man is working for Pepsi. Okay, let's go and get it. And they go to the to this guy and said to them, said to him, you are uh, thinking in selling refreshment in all your life or you already do something important in your life. And they get the, the, the marketing guy in Pepsi. For the, this is the better option for the role. You, your role change in the, in the past of the time. That's very good. So yeah, that happens, right? So whenever you create a, a business, uh, yeah, at the very beginning, you do almost everything that happens, right? Depending, of course, of the uh, of the business, but most, I mean, most likely you are going to be involved in all the processes, but as the business is growing, so definitely you have to have people that are specialists that you trust that they are going to do things the way that your vision has. So, and I mean, then you have a different role. You are changing and probably in the future you are going to be changing as well. So uh, the world is a dynamic thing. And so we need to to adapt ourselves depending on where we are and where we want to go. Good. Any other comments, opinion that you find interesting here? Anybody? What it took my attention is that he mentioned that at the very beginning, he used all his savings. And even though he started, I think, John, because he says on his latest 20s, that means to be 28, 29. For me, it's a young person. Um, he was using his saving. And I couldn't, I don't know if I heard if I'm mistaken, but he said my retirement, something like that, or I don't know. But uh, he began with his own money. Uh, the beginning it wasn't easy, it was tough. But that mostly the rule for all the entrepreneurs, right? Starting with your own money and as a last resource, look for a difference in different sources, right? So the main idea is not to start with devs or looking at first in instance for a loan. It's better to save, save uh, count with your saving accounts and or with your savings and, and then let's start and let's move on and continue growing up and finding the good, the pros and and what is going in and out, etc. But that is what most uh, brought my attention because it seems like everybody start with his uh, own money. Very good, perfect. Yeah, I believe that that is something that is very important. I mean, yeah, probably it's easier for you to get a loan. Uh, if it doesn't work, they get your things uh, from the business, so that would be easier. Uh, I believe that what happens also is that you, whenever you really believe in what you're doing, when you research and and you are sure that this is going to work, uh, then you have to put everything in that one, right? So um, you you know that it's going to work, so you can invest everything that you have. That's why some people they go and look for loans, but only only if you really really believe that this is going to work. And another thing happens, I mean, uh, just you mentioned that one, that, yeah, he was in his, uh, in the last part of the 20s, and his 20s late part. So, um, uh, yeah, he said that he started with the idea, he was working on that one. I mean, it took, 
years to prepare only the idea. Whenever everything was set, then he, I mean, he knew the plan that he has to follow, right? That is very important. So it's not just an idea. I mean, it takes a lot of time, a lot of investment for you to research, for you to get the knowledge. And then uh, whenever you're ready, then you move move forward. And also uh, saying uh, or linked to what you are mentioning that he was kind of young. At the end, he says, what is, uh, when the other person asks, um, what uh, is your final, your final advice for young entrepreneurs? He said that he wished he had known many other things before. I mean, he wished to start around 15, in his 15, 16 years old. Imagine that. So, so, and then maybe he had started sooner. I mean, he had done things easier or faster right but that's the way it is i mean to build a company that is worth three billion dollars is not that easy right so uh but i believe that that is key that is key when you really believe and you research you create a plan you move forward of course the very first second third the tenth time is not going to work but you need to be patient and continue Very good. Any other comments uh, on the video? No others. Okay, there's something that I really liked that he said. Um, he said that sometimes some entrepreneurs, they They focus on making money. And he says, if you, you do it like that, it's not going to work. You need to focus on your vision, on implementing, on improving, on helping other people. So if you do that one and you improve your product or services, and then, I mean, you really care about customer care, about uh, all the things that are involved into that one, at the end, I mean, there is no other way that you are going to succeed. I mean, for sure that you are going to succeed. If that solves a problem, if that fills a need, and you really care about people that are buying those products, the rest is automatic. It's not easy. Definitely, it's not easy. So, and that's, that's the reason I believe not everybody jumped into that one. Uh, yeah, it's a good idea to be your own boss, to, I mean, have a lot of money at the end, but that is a suffering of several months, years. So it's not that easy, right? Okay, good, perfect. So now uh, let's go back. And this is for tomorrow. I mean, remember that tomorrow you are going to bring an idea, right? So you are going to pitch an idea. Any idea that you may want to pitch uh, is fine. I imagine that you want to sell the product. In mind that we here are the audience that are going to tell you, yes, I want 20 of those or a million of those. But of course, before we buy, we're going to buy, we're going to ask some questions, right? So this is like the little guide. We are going to do this. It's not group work, but it's individual. Uh, you can brainstorm your ideas, the ideas that you consider at some point in your life. I mean, sometimes there are things that you thought that you were going to, to present or Uh, it doesn't matter if it's not factual right now. Consider the ex expertise and background knowledge everyone in your team can bring. I mean, that is not just you, of course. Uh, so the idea can turn into a successful business. Discuss how innovative the ideas are. I believe this is very important. I mean, what is the difference in your product? I mean, if you are going to sell square pupusas, for example, why? Why people will buy that one? Um, I mean, what would you do to present the product? Uh, why people will say, hey, let's try this a square purpose. You know? I mean, that a product exists already, but square is like, really square? Where is that? Can I go and taste it? So that would be the idea, okay? Uh, vote for the most popular idea. We are not going to vote for the most popular because, I mean, it's a competition, but it's a health competition. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to say, I will buy that one, okay? And let's see if 
the most of the people will buy your product. That will be it. Visualize your target audience and describe its characteristics. That is also very important, right? Uh, some products are for everybody. Some other products are just for a specific uh, part of the market. Men, women, teenagers, babies, I don't know. So that would be it. And use the questions to help to shape up the business idea. Everybody's going to ask you questions, okay? Uh, of course, I'm going to ask you questions. You know that I will do. So uh, that is the idea for tomorrow. So you're going to be here presenting the idea. If you want to present the picture so you can describe that one. If you want, I mean, presentation is not necessary. If you have the time, that, that is good. If you don't have the time, don't worry. Just think of the idea, come and present that one. Also remember that tomorrow we are going to bring two or three new words. Words that for you are new, that are kind of, I don't know, not common words or common, but there are many uses, I don't know. So you can present that one every week, every Friday. And every Friday we will try to do something different so we can practice in different ways, different levels. Uh, I have two other activities that are going to be very good. I know that that is going to be very nice. But we're going to start with this one, of course. Uh, any questions for the activity of tomorrow? No, teacher. I I I have some questions, but you complete with the information. <laughs> teacher, I yeah, thought that tomorrow will be just the three new words, as you mentioned. Hey, no, tomorrow is going to be also this part, the entrepreneurship, the idea. So it's going to be two activities, the two or three words that are new. So you're going to tell, describe the word, uh, and then you're going to um, use an example or provide examples. And then also uh, we're going to bring this, that is going to be like an idea as entrepreneurship. Okay. So do you have questions about that? No, did you have any questions? All right, all right. Nice, let's do it then. Um, we're going to continue with that presentation. Let's continue speaking about entrepreneurs today and tomorrow are the last days of our business. So how do you start this one? Oh, it all starts with an idea. David, could you please help me reading this one? Of course. It all starts with an idea. Starting a company can be intimate, intimidating. You may need to take out a loan, lease a commercial property, or hire staff. The details can feel overwhelming. But if you've been working a nine to five for years, you might feel like you stopped growing. You are grateful for the people who helped you grow because now you are ready to use your skills in your own business venture. You know, have entrepreneurial characteristics and want to know where to start. The right person will try this, this environment. They have the entrepreneurial spirit necessary to make it happen and will feel more at peace running their own company than they ever could in the in an office year. Good, what do you get from this one? Okay, it is, it's not easy. It's not easy to start, it's not easy to lean the comfort zone where you feel uh, good. You working from a specific schedule for a specific days, having a specific day of, of vacations, uh, receiving a, a, a pay for your vacation or for holidays. And, and uh, if you are the entrepreneur, <laughs> you don't have nothing on that. And uh, leave that comfort zone is very, very difficult and uh, start to to do the things you need uh, to raise a business. That is so true. Yeah, we, uh, throughout this week, we have said that one a lot, right? So um, it's not easy. Um, I mean, it's going to take a lot of time, maybe. Uh, of course, 
if you have a job, you don't have to to skip your job just because you have an idea. You will do that one whenever you want to launch the product or something like that. Uh, but yeah, it's going to take a lot, a lot of, a lot of effort. Uh, and yes, I mean, um, whenever we have an idea and we start working on that one, um, we are not comfortable anymore in a, in an office, in a job, right? So we believe, oh, this is not for me. I need to go out of here. So yeah, that happens. So some people are like free spirits about that one. So what are the qualities of a successful entrepreneur? That is a very good question that Ana Claudia will help us here. What are the qualities of a successful entrepreneur? Starting a new business comes with an inherent amount of risk. You can do everything right, but external events could lead to a negative outcome. While there is no formula for entrepreneurship, there are good or bad entrepreneur characteristics. Here are some skills you need to become a successful uh, entrepreneur. Discipline. The number one quality of an entrepreneur is self-discipline. You need to do the work even when you don't feel like it. Feel like, like, as we're doing, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. If you have a day job, this could mean working long hours. You need to self-motivate. No, you need to self-motivate to wake up early or stay up late as you start your new venture good so what did you get from this <laughs> is the real truth so people who launch to be an entrepreneur wow they do everything there is also a saying i guess uh, comparing with uh with someone a religious man so you are the one Giving the miss, <laughs> getting the, the asking for, I don't know how to say that, but there is a saying, something like that, that is the one that makes everything. And that is correct. I, I have a close friend of mine. He, when he started as an entrepreneur, he tried with a lot of businesses. You just don't imagine he sold different things like products coming from the cow. Uh, he, also uh, start with a uh, different type of products, selling different things. Also, he was the one driving the, the motorcycle, delivering the product. It was so, it was so, so hard. I remember uh, every time when we talked with him, but now he, uh, his en enterprise is so established. And what he does is he sells products for pets. And now he has, I guess, one, two, three, four stores. And he makes delivery around the country. And he is now uh, preparing his uh, his uh, workforce, workforce? Yeah. to open a... Uh, a new star in Guatemala, a new store in Guatemala. So, but, but well, there is always a, also a picture that in his first day, all what he sold, it was $3.80. That, that was, <laughs> and it's the, he discovered that was the, the right products to sell by accident because he was trying, not only accident, but because he measured, he likes to measure. He's so, I don't know if you use this word, he's uh, picky. I don't know. He, he, he puts attention in details. And when on, on every night, what he was discovering that people was asking for, do you have this product for pet? Do you have this for dog? Do you have food for cats? And he was purchasing more product to to have at the store and then the 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 study the own analysis he made uh, was giving the directions where the he was for the for the enterprise now he i can say he's big 
he is also continue growing. He is preparing himself and and the crowd, but is he starting his first days was a pain, and it took time. But now he he works a lot. Very but he was good. making everything mm -hmm. like in this reading. Yeah, actually, that happens. I mean, that is a true. Um, and that is, I mean, it's true that you also have to be disciplined. Discipline is it's a must. If you are not disciplined, even if you have a great idea and mm -hmm. you want to achieve many things, it's not gonna work. It's mm -hmm. not gonna happen. And I believe that uh, that is not just only for entrepreneurs. I mean, I really love, I really love uh, to see success stories about. People, for example, recently about Oscars, right? Do you remember with this movie, The Whale, uh, Brendan Fraser, he won and it was amazing. Uh, I mean, uh, he was uh, an artist, uh, an actor a long time ago. Uh, he was very handsome, you know, he was very young, but he was never taken that serious. Then he got some problems, he got divorced, he got some surgery, and then uh, he was depressed. Many things happened to him. Uh, he tried. He tried to get uh, doing movies, and it was difficult. Everybody says, no, you're too fat. You're too old, or things like that. But at the end, uh, the opportunity came, right? And he made this movie that is a very good movie, The Whale. If you haven't seen that, uh, I recommend you to watch it. Okay. And, uh, I mean, he won out of nothing with the movie that he made at first after a, a great comeback he won the oscar to the best uh, actor the best male male actor it was amazing so i really love those kind of stories because you can see that it's it's, it's not easy right i mean no, sometimes it takes years and years of preparation of of growing so you can get that little moment i mean that mm -hmm. is a little moment when they say you are the winner you are the best Mm -hmm. it's yeah. not just like that so the same happens with entrepreneurs yeah you see that people they have their their vehicles they are the boss and they do many things and they make decisions but it's not easy i mean at the beginning at the very beginning this happens they suffer there are problems sometimes they believe that they are not going to make it it's it's mm -hmm. hard is high. And more in countries like ours where there is mm -hmm. no support, right? I mean, the only thing that you do here is to legalize that one and pay taxes and that's it. So there is not like a, somebody that's going to tell you, do this and go to that office and do this other thing. Or here is like a, a plan that you can follow or something like that. Teacher, it, most of the, the entrepreneur day, I think here in... in... I don't know if it's around the world, but here in this country, they are focused on uh, food area. But I think that the rest of us, the the, the customers, we are we are not get used uh, to to give them tips, and that helps a lot around the world when you travel. Is uh, people also look at you like a strange when you don't leave a tip. <laughs> And I think that's money that is moving, that is coming in and out, that even though it's not here, I know there are restaurants that uh, tips are part of the ticket, right? The, the full amount. And they, but they obligate you. I don't know if it's okay to say. They, uh, yeah, they obligated, you can say that. Obligated, I had to do it. But it's not a, something like culture. It's not our custom to say thank you to, for someone with a tip. We, 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 maybe we think, most of us, we think, it's, oh, it's my money, it's costing me, it's my job. But yeah, but these people also is growing, is growing and they are starting. And I think that will be a, a helping to launch them a little bit more. I think that that would be a good a customer, a good a thing to do here in our country, mostly yeah. with entrepreneurs. Yeah, that is true. Yeah, uh, yeah. whenever you have the chance, it's a good idea to tip people So for good service, of course. And on the other hand, it's also a good idea that something is not good, you go and say that one, right? Because mm -hmm. 
I mean, I, I believe that it's both ways. Sometimes there is a good service and we don't tip, we don't say thank you. And sometimes there is a bad service or a bad product and we are like, oh my God. But you God. are obligated to have exactly. Uh -huh. So uh, both ways is, is going to be good. I mean, if something is not correct, it's not good, you need to go and step out. So say mm -hmm. this is not good, so please change that one, right? Uh, and But also when somebody gives a, a very good service, and yeah. the product is nice. Yeah, it's a good thing just to, I mean, to leave three dollars is nothing, or to say thank you. Hey, this was very good. I really, mm -hmm. I really enjoyed it. Exactly. So. At least to say thank you. You're right. Yeah. Very good. Perfect. Thank you. So yeah. the next one is going to be. Uh, let me check. Curiosity. Definitely, this is very important. Liana Giselle. Not possible. Let's see then. Dora Elizabeth. Curiosity. The best entrepreneurs always want to learn more. They ask good questions and look for opportunities to grow themselves and their business. These people don't well or wow. work well on what they think they know, but instead change their opinions when present with a new information. Curiosity to learn is just part of how they approach the world. Okay, what do you get from this one? Uh, it's important uh, for entrepreneurs, knowledge, new knowledge in the, in the, I don't know, say in the, in the old, old business. Uh, for example, uh, and uh, lawyers, office lawyers uh, need to uh, 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 capacitation all That's the right. time. Mm -hmm. training all the time because the the laws change on the law change and all, all uh, there are other other forms they make a, a job okay. or, or when, when it's a, a a little business for example when um, to a store, to a store need to uh, uh, keep in trend in new new styles of shoes. Is change, change, change every every time. Okay, mm -hmm. very good, perfect. So, um, yeah, you're right. Curiosity is something that is very common in entrepreneurs so when you see that people are asking the right questions you know that they really care and since entrepreneurs they really care about their ideas they are always researching and, and they are always curious i mean not only when they uh, create a company and they are successful whenever they're successful sometimes they continue asking questions why why is it not possible to do it this way why is it possible to do it faster? So uh, that is something that is part of this kind of people. Leaders, you uh, always, if you are a leader, you always have to be uh, curious about many things, right? Why? Why this is happening? Why is not happening in other way? Why is she doing this? Why am I doing this this way? So uh, many things are related to this one. And that reflects that you really care about what you're doing. So definitely it's one of the most important things. A uh, question for everybody, what is dwell? I was looking for a uh, well um is like um persistent and something. Okay. So, but uh, I'm a little confused because uh, well, only well, 
uh, the translator uh, told me that it's altar. Yeah. But well, on is angels here, and right? Yeah, yeah. That is the phrasal verb that is a little bit different from the other one. So okay. yes, in this case, it's just dwell, dwell on or, or stay. It doesn't stay there. It doesn't leave what they think they know, but instead they change. So that will be it. Sometimes uh, in writing, when we are writing, instead of using the common word, sometimes we can use different words. So it's going to be more professional. So that is the only word. Okay. Good. Let me think that there is no other here. Very good. Let's continue. Next one says creativity. Uh, let's see. William Alexander. Okay, creativity. This is the spark that drives many successful startups. Uh, creativity isn't just for creativities. It's Maybe. a skill. Creative is, uh, it's a skill that everyone can cultivate. Uh, entrepreneurs always look for creative ways to solve problems or deliver a service, often with limited resources. They look in many different places for inspiration, and their creativity helps pull their love for what they do, find way, find what gives you ideas, and use it as your full. To cultivate this skill, learn or habit that support creativity. It could be music, meditation, or meeting new people. Good. What did you understand on this part? Okay. Um, I don't know. Uh, maybe creative. Creativity, it is not for just entrepreneur, but in this case, uh, you can look for for this skill at itself and in music, meditation, or meeting new people, or doing what you what you make happy for uh, for um, bring a, a good service or or a product you, you are selling. Okay, very good. So that is it. I mean, creativity, being creative is not just when you want to create something, right? Uh, sometimes, I mean, as it says there, sometimes creativity, uh, good ideas comes when you have a problem and you don't know how to solve it. So when you have a problem and you don't have the resources, sometimes you get creative. So you say, I'm going to do it this way and you adapt things. And then that might be the uh, the starting point of a great idea, so you can live on that one. So many things they uh, they happen just because of that one. They, they were trying to solve some things, and they um, identify this as a new product, service, or the solution of something. For example, in medicine, that happens a lot. They are looking for something, but at the end they uh, get to discover something else. So that happens. Good. Uh, the next one is willingness to try things. Uh, let's see. Fernando Ernesto Cosme. Uh, okay. Willingness to try things. As an entrepreneur, you will constantly be presented with new tasks that challenge your skill set. Resourcefulness goes hand in hand with experimentation and problem solving. Be ready to get creative, think outside the box and pull from your vast network experiences and the skill to take on a challenge. Prepare to watch your solution fail too. It's inevitable, inevitable. and every failure is an opportunity to learn and improve on your ideas. If you strategize well and offline metric for tracking success, you can quickly make adjustments and find appropriate solutions. 
Uh, show your product to a trusted group of friends, read market research to see if there is adequate demand and stay up date on the late, latest industry news. Then these strategies will help you uh, will help you take calculate risk while trying new things. Good. What did you get on this one? Uh, when an entrepreneur uh, always had maybe new ideas, uh, always uh, maybe watch all the world upside the box, always looking for maybe a new idea, a new maybe if it is a product or a system or something that an entrepreneur watch a necessity in, in a society. Maybe, uh, for example, you 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 are watching maybe a customer buying something in a store in that in the, it depends of the product that a, a, a customer uh, buys uh, you do you think you think maybe a compliment for that product and that that is an idea but uh, the, the the entrepreneurs have to be prepared with the with the not in, not all ideas are are good sometimes you you will fail with your idea, but they are trying again and again until reach the, their objective. That is a, a that is the the the, the thing the, the the dog of, of the entrepreneurs. That is because sometimes they are very successful in, in, in this in this uh, this topic. Very good. Yeah, actually, you are so right. I mean, you need to be willing to try different things, different solutions. It's not possible that the very first time you are going to find a solution, right? Yeah, you have an idea, but then you, sometimes you go and look for different things so you make this idea true. I mean, uh, that is something that is very, very important that you need to move on. Uh, and that's why we're telling that sometimes it takes years for you to, to have something, but of course, if you achieve that one, then you're done, right? But yeah, uh, it's not just the first time, the second time that you are implementing things that are going to work out. Definitely. Good. Honesty. Uh, Roxana Ibeth. Honesty. I'm sorry. Honesty. In this business world, you only have a good as you were, honestly and integrity are important traits, traits of an entrepreneur. His personality traits will reap several benefits. You will develop a reputation as a strong and honest communicator. Your employees will value your leadership. Clients will know you can deliver on your promises. People will be more willing to learn your money for your next idea, and your community will support you will support you during those times. Good. What did you get in this one? Well, the, it's important to create um like a honestly appearance or imagine because uh, imagine uh, when you have a, a little problem with some uh, productions or with some service but at, at in the past you 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 create a, a strong uh, imagine about your uh, product, service, or ideas, or whatever, you have a support because uh, maybe in that moment you get a um, bad production for, for a product maybe, but uh, the client and the rest of the world knows that the rest of your production is, is good. So the thing is that you need to be transparent with uh, your customers with your uh, team and with yourself because in the first time it's important 
create a strong idea not only for the for the world the strong idea is also for us because uh, it's important for uh, has an entrepreneur uh, have the knowledge have the know enough knowledge to um, support your idea to um, take advantage about uh, some troubles and uh, solve problems but in conclusion, the honestly is important not only for the customer, not only for the for your team. Uh, it's also uh, be honest with uh, yourself. Very good. I liked it. So yes, you need to be honest with yourself because it's your vision, right? It's your company, are your ideas, and you don't want in the future that people says no, that is not true. I mean, sometimes you make one mistake, only one, and that is it, right? There is no comeback. So that happens to a lot of people, a lot of company, a lot of in, in every industry. I mean, I remember, for example, in the 80s, there was, in the 80s or 90s, I don't remember, there was this actress that was very famous, Winona Ryder. I don't know if you have heard about that. And uh, she was, I mean, she was girlfriend of Johnny Depp, and she was, I mean, she was stunning uh, and then suddenly uh she was caught stealing in uh uh you know she was doing shoplifting shoplifting is when you go shopping but you don't shop you steal things in the let's say in simon for example and she was caught there in the cameras and my her career was destroyed man. she she was out of business for almost 20 years and then uh i mean she lost a lot of things that happens here in the in the industry once, you know, I was in a car wash uh, and they have, that was here in San Salvador. And there was like, a, you know, those water dispensers, crystal water dispenser there so you can go and bring water. I mean, there in front of the people, the guy there, the owner of the, of the car wash, he uh, saw that it was empty. So he took the recipient, he goes to the, the faucet and he started to fill the, the cover there in the water of the <laughs> of the of the faucet there, I mean, and the water, right? And mm -hmm. he put it back and he was like, okay, that's it. And we were like, my goodness, that's not good, right? I mean, <laughs> so, uh, and if he, I, I was thinking to myself that, that time, I mean, if he did that right in front of the customers, what does he do when he is alone? With, I don't know. You create a bad, a, a bad imagine about your your service, your product, your mark, your brand. Yes, exactly. I mean, if you don't have money for what you don't put a dispenser, right? So that is it. It's, it's it's not an obligation that he has to put some water for the clients. But what he did was not good. It was something very simple. Of course, me and the people that were there, we are not going to come back there, right? Because mm -hmm. I mean, uh, some other things might happen, so it's not good. So that happens. Um, people believe that this is not important, but it's very, very important to be honest, to be honest with your customers, to say whenever you cannot do things uh, clear, I'm sorry, this is not possible, right? I know that you want this, but I cannot do that for you. Mm -hmm. And as you say, that is something very, very good that you need to be honest with yourself because it, this is your business, your idea, your company, uh, your job. I mean, you need to be honest at your job because, I mean, it's important. I mean, it's who you are, right? Good, perfect. Uh, let's move to the next one. Number six, always have a plan. Uh, Giselle, is it possible for you? Yes, teacher. Okay. okay, six, always have a plan. Successful businesses leave little up to chance. They look far into the future with backup plans to adapt to unexpected events. You should have a vision for your company five, 10 years from now. To bring that vision to life, you can use the SMART goal setting method to set short and long-term business goals. These are goals that are 
specific. What is the exact outcome you're hoping for? Measurable. How will you know you achieve you achieve this outcome? Achievable. Is it reasonable for you to expect to achieve this goal? Realistic. Can you arrive at your goal with your current resources? Time bound. Do you have a clear deadline for your goal? Each goal should build on the last, bringing you closer to your vision and closer to reality. Also, remember that a lot can change over the years. You're allowed to adjust your plan if needed. Perfect. What did you get from this? That businesses are not statics. They change with time and they change with the things that happen around, around them. For example, with the pandemic, a lot, a lot of businesses, uh, they didn't expect that. So I remember that in, in the, at the university, they, um, at some point in, in, a, in, a, in a class, one teacher told us that to make this, this um, the El Foda, the Foda, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I never, never, never think about to, to put a pandemic as a threat. And that happens, that really happens to us. So a lot of companies uh, uh, don't have a plan for that scenario. So it's very important to be prepared for the future, yeah, but always uh, uh, consider considering the present. It's very important, yeah, you can dream and you can plan a lot of things, but you always have to be, or, or you always have to, to have your, your, your feet on the ground, you know, and consider all the things that you have. For example, the resources that, uh, that, that this mentioned this in this part of the of the goals uh, is realistic. My goal, uh, I have a plan in how many times I want to achieve this. I have the money. I have the 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 human resource. I have the I don't know a lot of things. So it's very important to live in the present. But yeah, it's it's also important to to plan a couple of things uh, to, for the future. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Thank you, Giselle. And you are so right. Actually, yeah, I mean, what you say is true. Uh, nobody said, uh, in case a pandemic comes, we're going to set this. No, right. So, But that happens. Uh, sometimes it's possible to look for the future. So, for example, right now, if I had a company that is uh, with relation uh, with other countries, I would think about the war, right? War in Russia and Ukraine. And I will be reading that one. I will be ready on that situation. I mean, that is going to impact even here in El Salvador. I mean, if that happens, if they go to a, a, a greater war, of course, it's going, to, it's going to affect us. And also other things, for example, researching is very important. I was reading uh, that this year is the transition from... Uh, La Niña to El Niño, that is a weather uh, phenomena, you know. So next year is going to be El Niño. That means there won't be any rain. Uh, not any, but there won't be a lot of rain. That means that the crops are going to be a few. That means that everything is going to be more expensive next year. So, I mean, imagine that and the war and the economic crisis oh my goodness, next year is going to be a problem, right? So we need, not only the companies, but as people, as families, we need to be ready. So probably next year, I will buy some cans of food so I can keep them uh, just in case something happened, right? Of course, I'm not going to buy toilet paper. I don't know, people in pandemic, they were crazy about that one. I don't know what happened. But I mean, we need to be ready just in case, right? And uh, this part is very interesting for me because this is something that I really use every time that I set a goal for me or for a team member, somebody at, jo at the job. Their goals that are smart, that is a very good thing. Smart for specific, measurable, achievable, realistic, and time-bound. Specific, you need to be very specific. I mean, 
you are going to improve this in three months. Yeah, definitely. So very specific. You're going to improve the way that you sell the goods. Uh, you are going to improve in 80% of something like that one, right? Measurable, definitely. You have to put a number to any goal. In three months, 80% of the goods are going to be sold, for example. Achievable, definitely. You need to be reasonable about that one. You cannot go beyond uh, what is realistic. I mean, the, actually, that is the next one. Realistic. So uh, do you have the resources for this one? I mean, maybe the goal is achievable, but do you have the computer, the system, the knowledge about that one? And time bound, I mean, you need to set a deadline in three months, in six months, in one year. So this is something that is very, very common nowadays, and we need to do it even when we are planning uh, goals or objectives in our personal life. So that is something very good. Good, perfect. Do you have any questions so far? Anybody? Okay, number seven then. Uh, let's see. This is going to be for Luis Albert. Last Steve. Not here. Uh, let's see then. Jose Osmin. He is with Steve buying some food. Then let's see Francisco Eduardo. Hello, teacher. Hello. Hey, teacher number seven. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Understanding the value of self-care. Great leaders understand that exhaustion and overwork are a receipt for disaster. They may have all the skill in the world. But with all proper wellness, they won't be able to execute. But getting time for self care will pay you back tenfold. The same philosophy applies to your employees. Make sure they understand the value of their work and encourage them to rest when they need it. They will pay you back with a positive attitude attitude and a stronger work ethic good what did you understand this one um uh, uh, all is is important uh make a in the, in a business in a work a uh, mnemonic or doing the the tax or the activity is important but uh, uh, I, I think that the first is uh, the security, the, the wellness, the health, because uh, if uh, you uh, are uh, sick, you uh, don't, uh, don't work, you don't uh, uh, doing anything. And for me, it's, it's, uh, I, I, I agree with this part, because uh, it's very very important the 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 health is first is first is first that the money and, and it's possible that that work they should I understand that perfect actually that is it I mean yeah you need to work sometimes extra hours or sometimes you need to research sometimes that's going to happen but then you need to go and rest and then you need to have your food. So everything is important and also take care of yourself. It's very important. And that is something that you don't have to forget for your employees. I mean, uh, yeah, we need to achieve the goals, but they need to rest. They need to have their food. They need some entertainment. They need to have a life. So they are motivated. So that is a very important thing that some people sometimes forget, yeah, whenever they are in a position of a bus or uh, they have their own uh, companies. I mean, yeah, we need, we need to have a life and we need to get some rest. Definitely, that is a very important thing. 
uh let's see what is budgeting anybody but it is something that uh, the money you have for a project something like that and then uh, you need to put in this uh, in in this type of uh, planning your yourself your your care okay yeah, definitely. Here this time, uh, well, in this paragraph is about time. So budgeting is to a resource that you invest. Sometimes we are the most common is money that you invest, that you have the money for you to invest in something. Good. Uh, the other word is tenfold. What is tenfold? Anybody knows or have looked for that one in the dictionary? Tenfold. What is that? It's uh, hey. something hey. that uh, gives you more ten times. It's uh, something that uh, multiplies the benefit. Very good. Perfect. Somebody was going to say something else. The same 10 times it's told my work. <laughs> All right, very good. So that is it. I mean, yeah, when you rest, when you are motivated, when you are happy, uh, yeah, you pay back tenfold. So 10 times the, the, the time that you rest, uh, for example. So that is true. Uh, that is for sure is something that is very true. I don't see any other word here. So let's move on. Okay, taking risks. Uh, Wendy, Patricia. Hello, Wendy. She's not here with us. Uh, Fra Fernando Marvin Gonzalez. Not possible. Still in transit. Still the Still the ah, okay. Okay. Taking risk. Right. Risk taken often do well as business leaders, but you should be clear on your approach Hola. and have a backup plan ready to go. Should thing go awry. Okay. This is a characteristic of a good entrepreneur because business owners often need to go off the beaten path. This can be scary, but entrepreneurs must set aside their fears and take the lead needed to make their vision come to life. Good. What do you get from this one? Um, definitely an entrepreneur person can be risk takers because um. Uh, Maybe that the principal reason for uh for people that now uh became an entrepreneur is because the most of the people uh we are fear of the risk that the it represents because um all we have maybe all we had an idea. A very good idea, but we need resources, we need a plan, we need a lot of team. But uh, when we think about the, the risk of lose all that thing, so we only thinking about it, then we don't do nothing. So it's important to um, take in consideration all the risks and maybe be be bright for taking okay very good so that is it yeah definitely if you are going to be an entrepreneur you need to take risks but taking risks doesn't mean that you actually are going to risk everything i mean you know that there is a percentage of risk that you are going to face but you need to be ready so this is what is important about this part you need to have a backup plan 
what happens if I don't sell all my products? What happens if I overproduce? What happens if the delivery cannot deliver the products on time? So we need, we need to be ready for, well, actually the word says they're already, when things go already. Do you know what is already, anybody? Mm, it's different from what you plan or what you expect. So I'm like that one. So you plan this way and it goes the other way, right? So it, this is like, like twisted. So it got like in problems, right? So something like that. Sometimes that happens, but I mean, taking risks, it means that you are going to evaluate those risks and having a plan in case the worst happens. So you don't lose all your investment. So it's not going to be like, uh, yeah, there was a risk and I lost everything. No, right? So. Uh, definitely that that is also something that can happen because sometimes you know the perfect storm comes to uh find us but um if you do the right thing and you are ready with backup plans definitely you will be able to move on uh let's see if there is no other word i guess here okay let's move on number nine adaptability uh, Jose Wilfredo, is it possible for you? Okay, adaptability. The world is constantly changing and is how we do business. Entrepreneurs have no shortage of unexpected, unexpected challenge and surprise opportunities. So they must act quickly and efficiently. This adaptability is what makes successful business, and it's particular true for entrepreneurs with the millennial workforce, rather than trying to force templates that work in the past. Entrepreneurs must be flexible to changing norms like hybrid work models and offering better employee work-life balance good what did you get from this uh this is maybe could be an skill that uh, some entrepreneurs has to have uh just to be as successful because as the article said if they they know that maybe the 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 business work will change they need to be prepared on that change to be successful Definitely, right? So, uh, yeah, not only entrepreneurs, but everybody, we need to be adaptable for things mm -hmm. that are changing. Uh, yeah. Yep. And step... also maybe they make some research because as he here says that uh, they use some uh, templates that work in the past. So they make some research first after to, to apply those uh, methods to, to be successful. Yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, yeah, there are formulas that work with other companies, but not necessarily going to work for our company or for our situation because times are changing. That's, I mean, that's what I was going to tell you. I uh, Last class that we were together, we were in the pandemic. We were speaking about many things. The reality we're living right now is a different thing. I mean, now all schools are back, so everything is very expensive. We don't know what's going to happen from here to one year. Many things has changed. We don't know what's going to happen in two, three, five years. So we need to, to be ready to adapt ourselves. Definitely. That is a must. Good. Ten, persistence after failure. Uh, David. Okay. Persistence. After failure, successful entrepreneurs understand that failure isn't the end of the world. Instead, failure is a rehearsal for success. Persisting despite any roadblocks increase your confidence, conviction, creativity, and innovation. If you fail, you learn lessons to apply to the next challenge and teach yourself you are greedier than you thought. 
all that radical thinking may, may lead to radical results. Good. What did you understand on this one? Well, this is a very important. The, the capability of uh, get up, uh, stand up, and go ahead. It don't matter what happened. The, that guy that uh, uh, worked uh, doing pizza, he wants to to make pizza, to make pizza, to make pizza, but uh, he can be successful. So, and uh, he started another business, a car wash, and another business uh, to maintain the dream to make pizza. And uh, he didn't have uh, any any profits from pizza. But after a, a time, the idea of uh, delivering the pizza to every people uh, with the promise that, that you have the pizza uh, hot and, uh, in uh, 20, in 30 minutes. And uh, there is no delivery, nothing, no, no enterprise, no company has delivery. It was a craziness, but uh, they started with the old, old car. Uh, it says uh, start delivering the pizza, and uh, now it's a billionaire business, uh, Domino's Pizza. And uh, you start again and again and again until you see the results you want is you have the passion. If you don't have passion, it's better you don't go. <laughs> yeah, I totally agree. Passion. Uh, I was thinking today at my job, some, some people, they do not have passion. I know that it's just a job, but I mean, you need to do things right, right? So passion is something very, very important in life. We all are looking for passion in everything that we do, in music, in um, in love, uh, in uh in our jobs in our lives so it's a very important thing so definitely and yeah creativity that gets together with this from persistency sometimes there are no solutions right but you need to think out of the box and come with new ideas and that might be the first step to something amazing good i have a question here what is greedy air on the second paragraph <laughs> I, I, I see right. this. Uh, sorry? Uh, I think that is something like to be brave. Good. That is it. To be brave about circumstances, right? So, and this is very interesting. It says the next challenge is teach yourself you're greater than you thought. That happens to us, right? Uh, yeah, life sometimes. It's not easy because of many things, right? So we need to motivate ourselves and go go beyond. Good, good. Uh, I don't think there is any other here. Mm, this is for tomorrow. Okay. Very good, my friends. So before uh, well, we continue, do you have any questions? I, I think this is a very, very important uh, information, characteristic, qualities. I I start doing something with my, my students because after three years of a uh, start at home, uh, now they need to go to school. They are tired, they are not persistent, uh, they uh, have no passion, and they, uh, in the past, they were comfortable in their houses, maybe without shoes, maybe without pants, and, and now <laughs> it's very difficult. And I need, I, I have uh, some motivational phrases that uh, stand up and say that. And uh, all of us uh, repeat uh, that the phrases and 
and their attitude change, change, and they uh, pay more attention and uh, stay more quiet in the class. That is important because the past three years was uh, amazing, but now they, they, they need to be, again, uh, with habits and another circumstance. And in any, any situation that we live, we need to be creative, we need to be persistent, we need to have a vision even in the, in the job. We need to have a vision. If we were only for the money, we were frustrated. But if we have a vision in, the, in, the, in our job, that will be grateful for us. Okay. Yeah, actually, that is something that is very important uh, to motivate people. And with kids, it's more important, right? Because uh, everything that you teach is going to stay with them forever. Uh, and it's going to it's going to do something for their life. So uh, that happens in uh, every age. But sometimes adults, we are uh, stressed out with job and uh, many other things. But kids, they... They stick with that one. So that is a very good thing. Good. Okay, so we're going to do free practice because we have a few minutes. Nice. So who's going to be the first one? That's what I'm thinking. You know that we sometimes speak. I, I bring some topics that are crazy sometimes. Sometimes it's just speaking. I don't, don't worry about that. One. Let's see. Uh, mini, mini, mini. Mm -hmm. Giselle. I had a feeling, you know. Really? Why? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I wasn't like. So you were closing your eyes I'm like. Very sure that. Right? No, no, I don't want to be. <laughs> you mentioned me. Yeah, here I am. Maybe you call my thoughts. So because you were yeah. like, it's me, it's me. I say, ah, oh, it's her. So that is it. <laughs> I feel the vibe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. How are you, Giselle? I'm great, teacher. Nice. Perfect. Yep. Yeah, it's nice to see you again. So I know that we know for a few days. So I have a question for you. Mm -hmm. Who are you? What? what? <laughs> How do you describe yourself? Mm, maybe I'm a person that, well, I think that I am uh, honest and I like honesty too. Um, I think that most of the time I'm like a happy person. I try to to see it's good and bad, to stay positive. Um, you know, something like that. Um, I'm also think that I'm a very responsible person, a very respectful person, and yeah, I think that I'm a good friend too. I'm a good listener. I like to to listen people, and if I I have the chance to to provide any advice or or something like that, I just do that. Very I good. think I'm a very supportive person too. When my friends need me, I'm I'm there for for I'm here for for them, and I think that it's the same when I need them. They are for me. Yep. Interesting. Very good. Um, what makes you sad? <clears throat> it's a strange, a strange thing. I love milk a lot. When I don't have milk in my house, my fridge, I get sad. I get sad. Yeah. I I'm like, oh my god, there's no milk. No milk, no milk in the house. And yeah, I feel sad when, when I don't have milk in my fridge. So it's kind of weird. But yeah, that may maybe that and things that may be sad, for example, I don't know. I don't like to, to, to feel sad or to be sad. But maybe when someone betrayed me, okay. that makes me feel very, very sad. Very good. Um, how do you believe are you going to be in, let's say, 10 years? I'm going to, how, sorry, again? How do you think is going to be your life? How is going to be okay. 
Giselle in 10 years. In 10 years, oh my God. I don't know, maybe, maybe in a marriage life. <laughs> I like to, to think that maybe, yeah, maybe in 10 years, it's, it's a good time to be married and maybe, maybe a kid. Oh. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, and that's my personal life. In, in my professional life, maybe to be in a better place. I'm trying to improve, first of all, my English skills and, and I try to learn a lot of things. I, I like to be like a sponge in my work. To I, I like to, to learn from, from a lot of people that is around me. And I have the chance to, to, to learn, actually, from a lot of people, from my boss, um, my coworkers, uh, a, lot of, a lot of people that I don't know that have a lot of experiences that, that could help me to, to learn more. So in 10 years, maybe I like to be in a better position in my, in my work. I, I see in the same company, see myself in the same company. I like the company that I work for, that I work for and yeah maybe to be in a better position maybe uh I don't know to be to 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 be the head the head of of a department for example I dream of that and, and yeah I think that mm -hmm. okay very good interesting thank you yourself enough by um, now my pleasure you. <laughs> thank you you were on the spot so <laughs> Very good. So let's see who's next because we have a lot of time. That's that's good. Um, let's see. My cousin, Roxana Ibeth. Yeah, we have the same last name. That is weird, right? Oh, um, yeah. <laughs> uh, we're gonna start with the first uh, with the same question. Who are you? How do you describe yourself? I'm not sure because, <laughs> well, to be honest with you, um, I guess, or I consider that um, I am a shy person. Uh, sometimes uh, I could be a lot of friendly, but only with my close friend or my close team. And I, mm, I'm a workaholic. Oh, me too. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, when, well, in my case, when since I was, since I, I, work, huh? since I started since, working, you could say. Since I started working from home, workaholic is a lifestyle. So it's, it's demanding. Uh, that's why. Uh, mm, uh, when I try to be a happy person, maybe my face is not like that because uh, I, I think that I look like a hungry, hungry person. No, but, I know. Uh, not at all. <laughs> yeah, to be honest with you, yes. <laughs> my face is not friendly at all, uh, but I try. Is uh, I'm working all the time with, with this because always I was or I'm I like that and I avoid to to uh, spend time talking with other person so it's um como una brecha it's, it's like a like a gap I don't know yeah uh, but I working I'm working always in that and um, okay interesting thank you um what makes you happy resting i love resting but i can have enough time <laughs> in traveling uh, but uh, to be honest with you when i have a uh, a little time to to, to rest in uh, I love uh, cleaning the house because I live in, in the main street and the previous week Bobial uh, was working there and I have a lot of uh, polvo, how do you say polvo? A lot of? Polvo. 
phone book, phone dust. book, dust, yeah. And that's why uh, all the, 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 the house has um, a little dirty, 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 dirty. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, when I uh, have time, I love uh, doing the cleaning the house and spend time with my family. And if it's possible, I have a couple of days of vacation. I love traveling and resting. Okay, very good, nice. Uh, how do you think you are going to be in the next 10 years? Um, professional, maybe um, I will work in, a, in another company with a better job position as a leader. Um, maybe in another country, my, my mind is not here, maybe I continue working from home, but in other, in other countries. And that is personally, I just surviving, maybe. <laughs> you know, that is one of the With answers that health. I go ahead. With mental health, that is important. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the things that I uh, always answer when somebody says, how are you surviving? I say, so <laughs> yeah. it's something that I always say. <laughs> that age are really, really complex because you uh, start the week and always are working, 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 doing uh, different activities. Well, in my case, uh, spend time with... Uh, uh, um, with my home, with my son, homeworks, and I said, let me see, see the music, yeah. Mm -hmm. And you know, I'm working all the time, and after that, I need to check in some homework with him, and after that, I'm here, and I don't have enough time, so I like, I feel like um airplane. <laughs> okay so yeah you know um, future uh, can be just nice so yeah. um, and uh, if you have your plans I mean the other things are going to come to your life that that is for sure okay. perfect so it's very interesting I was thinking that one that we had the same last name so I don't know why there are lots of assumptions in the world, I guess. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you. Let's check now. Now we go with a boy. Luis Albert. Hello. Hey, how Good are you? Teacher. Good evening. I'm fine. I'm um, tired. I have a long day, but it's okay. Well, today is uh, Thursday, so tomorrow is Friday, and that's it, right? So that's good. <laughs> yeah. Do you work on Saturdays? Uh, no, no, no. Weekend. That's oh. Nice. That's very good. I uh, study on Saturdays uh, in the morning and uh, Power BI. Ah, that is a very good thing, you know. Yeah, I, I'm thinking to take, you know, uh, I really like technology and I'm I'm going to take a course about business intelligence and artificial yes. intelligence. So that is artificial a very... Artificial intelligence, like is this chat, uh, uh, I don't remember the name. Is, uh, it's, it's a chat uh, online. It's an artificial uh, intelligence. You, you you make, a, a, you do your make, um, for example, um, if you do, if you want to do um, a paragraph or some some kind, uh, for example, you know, a movie or uh, taking a specific uh, a specific tale or or something like that, 
um, when you look or when you try to look for them on Google, for example, uh, you can you can find that. Um, for example, is a story a story about the pupusas, and they and this application create uh, with information. And when you if you Google it, uh, don't find that. Don't find uh, this information. Yeah. But uh, I have some some friends. They study actually. Uh, they study, and they do uh, their homework. In, with using this 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 application, <laughs> yeah, that uh, is amazing. It's amazing. Yes, uh, the this application has uh, some issues, but continue improving. Yeah, you know, uh, actually, I work for Google, and we just launched another one that is more powerful than that one. Uh, the only problem is that that is just a beta one and is going to be tested by some companies only. But that is going to be, that is going to be exciting. It's going to be amazing. I'm I'm yes, trying to, I'm trying to get the access to that one. So, uh, and if I have the access, I will show you how, how it's going to be that one. But it's going to be state of the art, you know. Yeah. And maybe the real problem on those kind of things is that maybe in the future, they are not going to need some people, some employees. Some employees, to... yes. Uh, right here. Uh, I was uh, TV some, day, uh, some days ago, and CNN clicks. Mm -hmm. uh, they are. Uh, they were talking about uh, some employees uh, don't use a person, only this kind of, of program or a robot for intelligence, artificial intelligence, um, using in order to substitute a person. And it's okay in some situation or, or kind of work, but it's difficult if you don't find a, a job to give you, give you money your, uh, for your family. It's, really difficult is the balance look uh, between employees and substitute is this this person or this kind of employees uh, using intelligence artificial artificial intelligence yeah that is it's, true uh, but it's is 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 real it's real yeah. in these days is because if you look uh, for example, uh, some years ago, uh, Bill, uh, uh, Bill or Pix is uh, cars, for example. Uh, how many, how many person we need? Uh, maybe uh, 10, 14 person. And now uh, maybe only one, they check. If you work, uh, it's, it's, it's okay. Everything is okay. And that's all. Yeah, it's, it's very interesting. And that is true. Um, yeah, maybe we are a little bit far from a real impact for em employees. I mean, a worldwide. But we are on the way to that one. So I believe that maybe in 10, 20 years, everything is going to be different. So I hope... You know, I was I was checking on the news that there was like a survey and uh, lots of people in Latin America, almost all the teenagers or all the young people uh, in Latin America, they said that the, the dream job was to be a YouTuber. And I was like, yes. oh my goodness, that's not good. It's impossible. <laughs> so uh, I hope, I hope that in the future, lots of people are studying things like this. I mean, um, here we have a lot of resources. Uh, I mean, not only by coding, but also by by doing these kind of things. I mean, analyzing data and providing some insights to company that is going to be very good. To me, is the it's okay it would be YouTuber or or something like that, but in, I see that like a hobby. 
nor yeah. an employee because we need doctors, we need a real people, real work in, in order to solve different kind of problems we, we have. So true, that is so necessary. True. Yeah, it is necessary. Totally necessary. Hey, I wanted to ask you, your second name is Albert, but do you do you spell yes. that with an H at the end? Yes. Ah, okay. This Albert. is the very first time that I, I hear something like that one. I was I wanted to be sure, but sometimes the H. you know the, the the company they misspell some some words. So I was I was wondering if, if that was uh, the real spelling of your name. Yes. Good. And yes. where are you starting? I uh, had three three names. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had a friend that used to be like that. Yeah, I, I still remember he, he his name was Mauricio Ernesto Arturo and then his last name. So it was <laughs> it was interesting. The first name is is, is my, my mother got me the first name, Luis. Mm -hmm. And the second and third name, my brothers. They mm -hmm. chose choose my my second and third name. I don't know if you remember uh, this series, uh, Candy. Yeah. Yes. I have seen something about they, that. They, they, my brothers, they, they like, they like um, to see, to watch TV in, in this series, that series, Candy, and they, they told me about uh, the issues that that's kind of names, um, Albert and Steve. Imagine, yeah, that is true. I, I didn't realize about that one. Albert and Steve, right? So, <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's, it's so funny to me. I, I really like, I, I like the Steve real. Yeah, I mean, so it's very Friends nice. call me Albert or Luis or Steve. Yes, it's, it's okay to me. No problem. So you're still looking for your candy, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> 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 okay very good perfect thank you steve thank you for sure okay we have time for one more a volunteer who wants to volunteer i will teacher perfect hey how are you so uh, how are you so so good so good okay very yeah. good thank you thank you to ask the train so you're still working from home? Yeah, I'm still working at home. Amazing. I envy you. Yeah, it's the best. Yeah, I know. I really <laughs> miss that. So, but anyway, what can I do? Yeah, <laughs> that's right, teacher. But you have to. Yeah. Yeah. You know, you're still building... working with you're still working with Zellus, right? Yeah, yeah. I'm still in Google, so Oh. Yeah, and uh, yeah, lots of changes. You know, uh, p all companies they are moving people. I was reading that Amazon is going to fire nine thousand people. Uh, we are in the process on that. Of course, we are not going mm -hmm. to fire nine thousand people, but yeah, we are going to reubicate in other accounts around two hundred people. So that happens. So it's it's kind of hard. Yeah, that's right. That's true. Well, but. I'm sorry to hear that. Yeah, so we're here. We're still uh, here. So you move to to work at the building. So yeah, and, and I mean, uh, when, when at the beginning, uh, I was hoping maybe some days and we were going to go back. So <laughs> this is Google, you know. But then I saw that they're build they are building another building, so it's not gonna happen. So I know that it's, yeah. it's never gonna happen. yeah, <laughs> never gonna happen again. Yeah. Not, not for just another day. pandemic could be yeah it's yeah. coming up yeah now we will go like that <laughs> or the war you know maybe the war i don't know oh yeah that won't be That's good will be, <laughs> but yes, first of all yeah I, I prefer to go to the building actually <laughs> <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's right <laughs> yeah. yeah okay yeah i was starting with a question so let's see how it goes um who are you who how do you describe yourself I'm a energetic person with a positive thing, and in the most of the time, and also, um, yeah, a loyalty person. Very good, perfect. And yeah. uh, what makes you cry? 
maybe lose a family member could be oh, definitely. also my pet that uh the last year so i cry for them for her because you I'm know sure. they become a, a part of your family so that that is terrible yeah i understand yeah that is yeah some uh, you know that happened to me uh like two three years ago and uh, I, I like rock music and there is a band that is called the mm -hmm. name of the band is El Maton Policia Motorizado and they mm -hmm. have a song that is called uh, El Perro and the song is mm -hmm. about that he lost his dog and he's looking for his dog and he's crying and I always cry with that song so yeah it's, it's, hey we'll look for it yeah it's a it's a very nice song uh, he's looking for I mean it's uh, it's very sad I, I always remember I my also dog. like rock so. <laughs> yeah you know sometimes it's good a good thing to cry i really i'm really bad i really i cry a lot with movies you know i love dramas that really touch me and i say oh my goodness life is so amazing because i'm here right so uh yeah sometimes it's, it's good to look for experience for, like that so it's kind of yeah uh, some of my friends they tell they uh, most of the time they tell me hey but you look strong what's going on but they are the feeling we're human right so uh -huh. yeah that's right so we have to yeah that is the truth yeah because I, I i really love my family yeah yeah i mean that is the most important and of course if something yeah. happened uh, you worry and you i mean i believe that every day every day we see our family there and it's like hello how are you and whatever right because we mm -hmm. get used to it but sometimes, yeah. sometimes you need to realize that sometimes you're not going to be there or they are not going to be there. So it's a good yeah, idea. That's to, right. It's a good Nobody idea. Nobody knows. Yeah, to hug them and to tell them, "Hey, I love you, man." Or yeah, or whatever. That that's is right. very important. Uh, very good. Uh, how do you believe you're going to be in the next ten years? Well, I guess with a healthy life with a better body after a years on the gym. So maybe with two kids with the same wife, uh, living in another uh, comfortable ho a house. Um, maybe in this country or, or maybe not. And in professional life, maybe uh, in a better position where I'm right now. But I believe that um, that will be less in the, than ten years, ten years uh, to be the boss of my department, because I'm learning a lot of a lot of things. Very good. I'm very sure that you are going to get that one. And uh, of course, if you take the right decisions, you're gonna get a very good life. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Okay. Well. Nice. We don't have time for more, but I'm going to continue. Please remember that one. Tomorrow, maybe we have a little bit of time, so we're going to continue with some, some uh, conversations, you know, we're here just to practice, so definitely we're going to have time for everybody. Before we finish, do you have any questions? No, teacher. No, no, no questions. Very well, so I'm going to check the attendance and let's go to bed. So the 101 of today is for Fernando Ernesto Cosme. And let's see, Ana Claudia González Velázquez. Present teacher. Good. David Samuel Galdames Monterrosa. Present teacher. Good. Dora Elizabeth Flores Mendez. Present. Good. Fernando Ernesto Cosme Morales. Present. Good. Fernando Marvin González Martinez. Present. Good. Francisco Eduardo Figueroa Mejía. Present teacher. Good. Ileana Giselle Cañas Escobar. Present. Good. Jarvin Isaac Guevara Miranda. Jose Marcos Rodriguez Ayala. Present. Good. Jose Oswin Rivas Navas. Present teacher. Good. Jose Wilfredo Ayala Sorto. Present teacher. Good. Juan Miguel Brand Mejia. 
Luis Albert Steve Bonilla Canales. Present teacher. Good. Roxana Yvette Asensio de Mejía. Present. Good. William Alexander Ramirez Flores. Present. Good. Wendy Patricia Molina Duarte. Okay, my friends, it was a pleasure. So see you tomorrow. Remember, we have two homeworks for tomorrow. So rest very well and dream in English. Thank you, teacher. Good night, everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Hello, Fernando. How are you? Uh, more or less, <laughs> to be honest, I I have been with with probably with my neck in in my shoulder for two months until no today. Way. No way. Is this because of stress or did you get hurt? Something like that. It's part of, but uh, it's uh, a combination of different things. I, for example, I I lost weight almost twenty pounds and it lasts two months and the stress is a factor too but uh, to be honest i don't know because i i have been checking with different exams like with orthopedists and uh, ne neurosurgeon i don't know how do you say it. yeah that's I, I am taking i am taking medicine i had to uh, take him uh, therapies uh, physical therapies uh, I, I am, maybe I am better than the, the last month, but I, I am really having problems. I see. I'm sorry to hear that one. So the good thing is that you're checking with the doctor. So hopefully you are going to find yes, what I is have to be <laughs> Yeah. I hope maybe I will be better. I hope so, definitely. Okay. And uh, okay. Regarding the English class, do you think, do you feel that you are moving on, that you are learning? Yes, I am. I understand. I understood all the, the topics, uh, the entrepreneurs, the, the factor of that makes an entrepreneur the different uh, capabilities set, uh, yeah. or just capabilities of an entrepreneur. I am, I am clear with all of that. Okay. Very good. And do you have any question about any topic that we have checked, not only in this module, but in the previous modules? Uh, no, so far, all, all good. Okay, very good. And uh, uh, do you practice? I mean, what do you believe is the skill that you need to practice more? Listening or reading or writing, speaking? Uh, maybe... Uh all of those uh, that you mentioned because <laughs> is I, I am maybe starting to to understand uh, listening for example i i like to to watch some series and i i watch the series uh, with english and with subtitles sometimes i the the, the, more, the more time maybe i understand that they are saying without uh, uh, reading the, the subtitles. And, but I have problem maybe with the contraction. All the, it's because we have, you have to be, uh, you have to be maybe looking for the, the context for understanding that the, the, the words and something that is very difficult for me because I am maybe I used to, to try to hear the, or maybe the two words uh, separadas. Separate. Separate, and when you, they use contractions, it, it's different. It's difficult to me with identify the contraction when I am listening. Yeah, you are right. That is kind of difficult because, I mean, sometimes people, they speak very fast, and, I mean, there are many things. And then you have to check out. Oh, he used the verb in this tense, or he, he's speaking about that one so that is so true but if you continue definitely you are going to be able to catch it in an easier way just him uh, i am a developer and every day i have to read all the all those things uh, 
that I have to research all are all uh, are in English. So I have to read every day and I have to maybe the the, the reading is the is the part that I am maybe uh, practice more every day. <laughs> Oh, that is good. That is good. And the good thing is that since you are using that one for your job, uh, you are looking for words that are specialized, right? So that is a very good thing. Yes, it may, maybe the vocabulary. The vocabulary I know, maybe I have to to try to learn maybe every week the different words. And sometimes I, I didn't do it. I didn't do it. And so maybe it's a, a factor that I, I have to improve. Okay, perfect. Very nice. Okay, do you have any question or anything that I can do for you? No, it's far. All good. Perfect. Thank you. So I won't take more of your time. So have a good night. Rest very well. I hope you get very soon, very healthy, and uh, see you tomorrow. Thank you. Good night. Good night.